you know, I, I bring up, I love jujitsu so much and I bring up a lot for people if they want to see the effectiveness of it. And it's not about bragging. I, I bring up an altercation of what happened that time I had to subdue that. That was great, man. Well, listen, man, I thank you. Thank you very much. Before that ever happened, ages ago, you were uh, in a restaurant and like this, talk about unruly. This guy was threatening to bite you and this and that in your face. And Ryan's face, just like it's now, Jimmy, talk about just, look, just yeah. nonchalant <laughs> until he thought, all right, now this this guy's, the threat's going to be a little too much. It's, and then he neutralized it. Nobody got fucking hurt. It's just controlling them. And it was, I think that, listen, I tell my students all the time, avoid, avoid a street situation. Avoid it. The, you know what I mean? But that is a beauty. I'm, I'm happy. Not that it happened to you. Not that that should happen to me. But I'm happy that both it, 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 in a sense, because that will empower people to learn jujitsu even more so than a lot of your fights, believe it or not. I, I agree. I agree entirely, man. And that's why it was really neat to watch uh, watch your situation unfold as well, because like obviously you could hurt that guy, but that wasn't what was required. You controlled this person. You demonstrated, you know, a scaled response. That's the beauty of jiu-jitsu. That's the power of martial arts, I think, is that, like you said, you can apply what's necessary. You don't have to just hit me with a three-piece every single time I look at you crooked, because most times it's uh, it just doesn't require that. And, you know, and ultimately, if any people also, I mean, not that I have the right to threaten you and this and that, but you know how it is, man. People don't know what they're getting themselves into. And, you know, just because someone says something a little sharp or does something a little ridiculous, beating them into a coma, even if even if that's somehow legally justifiable, I don't think that's morally justifiable. And it's nice to see people demonstrate the self-control of a martial artist. And, you know, like, obviously, that's something, again, I've been a big fan of yours forever, Matt. And it's it's just neat to see that in the ring, out of the ring, in the on the mat, you name it, it. You know, that's something that I would hope to to try to aspire to myself. And and those are the people that I look up to. Well, Ryan, what was interesting about that too is the fact that Matt, I think you touched on it, is you the, the second you got him down, you're like, I'm not gonna hurt him, I'm not gonna hurt him. Like immediately that that was what you were letting people know. Like, I'm not gonna hurt him, I'm just gonna kind of keep him here. And that was the the main concern you had was like I'm not gonna hurt this guy. You you weren't in, in felt feeling threatened by him at all on the ground it was just you letting people know that you weren't going to do any damage well i mean how many times do all of us you know like we've all been in different places in our life whether in the gym or whether you know out in the world like where you know you, you just act in a way that if everyone did to you what they can do to you at any given moment i don't think that's a world that we all want to live in you know i mean sometimes it gets that serious but for the most part it ain't that serious and it's nice to to be able to have a scaled response where again if you need to take it to that place you can but that's not your default, and uh, and, I, and I think that that's, again, why I enjoy fighting, because it, of who you have to be to be able to use your skills in the ring against a world-class opponent, against someone that, that wants to hurt you, and, like, you are physically at risk, and you're, you know, you could get hurt, you get embarrassed, you could go to the hospital, but can you remain calm and composed? Can you execute what you've trained? Can you still be yourself, even in, a, in what would otherwise be a, a trying moment? And I think that's what martial arts is meant to teach us, and... Uh, Again, that's why I that's why I enjoy training and that's why I enjoy fighting. And I was just glad that uh, that it came out well in that situation way back when. And the nice thing was that was prior to me getting involved in MMA. You know, that was I. It was just the jiu-jitsu experience that I had, and uh, you know, it it just you almost forget how powerful that is because we're all so used to training with other people that do this all the time. You know, you you can it is it is a borderline superpower, and, and it's just neat to see things used the right way when it can be. Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, I don't see you goofing on Ryan Hall when he says superpower. I like, I like Jimmy. It's only because I'm right here. Uh, he's, he's being polite. He's, he, would, he wouldn't be wrong to make fun of me. He's being polite. Listen, I, it's true. I use that a lot. He knows I'm a big fan of Yep. Well, not for anything. I'm, I'm wearing a Batman shirt. Yeah. I'm a 47-year-old man. But the point is this. It is true. I mean, and not the, about having a superpower. In a sense where these both guys that in our situations – they might have been real dopes, or they might have just been bad drinkers. When they bad guys, when they drink, they might just be a different person when they drink. You all dealt with guys like that when you're like, "Yo, did you see a uh, fucking Franco when he drinks? He's not like the same guy." Like, you know what I mean? So, like, there's certain guys when they drink, they might just be having a bad day. So, do you really want to knock their teeth out, or else do you want to just have them wake up with a hangover, being like, "Ah, fuck, I was mounted." last night and I <laughs> act like a fool. You know what I, mean? I was mounted. I was mounted and shit myself. Like, you know, I mean, I don't know. Well, dude, I mean, we've all sparred with you. I mean, I sparred with George St. Pierre, man. George is amazing. Like, sparred with some of the best guys in the world. Dude, if this guy wanted to put me in the ground, particularly at that time, that would not be a trick. But it's like, man, you know, they're they're gentlemen. They're under control. 
And even if you get a little bit out of hand, they might be like, hey, man, you know, calm it down a little. You know, it doesn't immediately have to go to a crazy place. And we've all sparred people that it will go to a crazy place immediately if they can get away with it. And I just I agree with you, man. I don't think that's respectable behavior. So it's, you know, what it is, you try to treat other people, at least how you kind of sort of like to be treated, because, you know, we've all had a couple beers too many before, you know. And has that, is that, was that the only time that's happened to you, Ryan? Because that, that's a great one on film. Has it happened before where it wasn't filmed? Um, you know, once or twice, not, not quite like, like that. I don't, I don't really, get, I, period, I don't know what it is, man. Dude, periodically, I, I had like three, pandemic's a little weird because people were a little on edge. I had like three grown men, like in their 30s and 40s, like borderline want to fight me. Two, two at Starbucks and one at the chicken restaurant, just standing in the line. And I'm like, I know I don't look very tough, but every now and then you're like, it's the lack of respect that hurts the most. I'm like, dude, you look like somebody's uncle. Like, what makes you think you're going to win this thing? And I don't know. So that happens every now and then. But I, I didn't know that that thing was uh, was recorded until after the fact. Um, that was, uh, yeah, that just, that worked out about as well as it could have. And I got to be honest, man, the guy that came the, afterwards, the cops let him go. And I, he came back in. I'm like, I'm going to get a fucking stab for sure. And then um, all they wanted to do was hug it out, apologize, and buy dinner. That was actually, all things considered, couldn't have gone better.